everyone, welcome to our episode of Super Reaction Bros. I'm Chris. I'm Chris. And on today's episode, we're taking a look at Scram Pitch Me for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. The first of the nine films in the series. But anyways, with the with the with fa the next Fantastic Beast getting ready to be released, because they just dropped the other trailer. Ten. Uh, yeah. No, eleven. It's gonna be eleven after the third Fantastic Beast film comes out. Go on. Anyways. Of course, Screen Rant decided, let's do another pitch meeting on the next Harry Potter film. This time, for the Chamber of Secrets. Yeah, that's all we got. Mm -hmm. That's that's about it. That's so let's just see what they're gonna deliver and bring to this uh, to this one. So again, here we go for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets pitch meeting. Let's find out. Oh, you have some new Harry Potter for me? Yes, sir, I do. So the Dursleys have this very important business dinner, right? And Harry has to stop this wacky house elf from disrupting it. How? So this is like a Harry Potter sitcom spin-off? No, actually, it's a movie. Really? Yeah, see, the Malfoy servant Dobby shows up because he wants to stop Harry from returning to Hogwarts. He says something bad is being planned. Oh, sounds dangerous. It will be. So after Dobby ruins this dinner, the Dursleys are sick of having Harry living in their house. So what do they do? Well, they make sure Harry can't leave their house. I see no problem with that logic, sure. But then Harry gets rescued by the Weasley kids in a flying car, so he escapes. Oh boy, time for the Hogwarts Express. Yeah, we'll actually see Dobby makes them miss the train, so they take the flying car to school and crash into the Whomping Willow. What's the Whomping <clears throat> Willow? It's just this tree they have at the school where if you get too close to it, it bludgeons you to death. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my they god. have that at a school. Well, in the next book we find out is to conceal a passageway for this werewolf to go transform. Put a spell or something. Isn't there a concealing spell? Yeah, I mean, probably, but they go with tree that might punch a child to death. Jeez. And this child drives itself off into the Forbidden Forest because I guess it has a mind of its own. Oh, it does? Yeah, well, wizards seem to have this casual godlike power to spontaneously create life. Like, Ron makes a bunch of slugs, Malfoy makes a snake. Oh, that has massive moral implications. No, it doesn't. Oh, all right. Yeah. It's this new defense against the dark arts teacher, Gilderoy Lockhart, right? And what's his deal? Well, he's this super famous wizard who wrote a bunch of books about his encounters with dark creatures, except he's a fraud. He didn't do any of it. Why would a celebrity accept a job teaching things he doesn't know and risk being exposed? Exposed. I don't know. Well, okay then. So anyway, throughout the school year, there's this mysterious monster going around the school, and it petrifies some students and a cat and Hermione and a ghost. Oh no. Yeah, so people are trying to figure out what it is, right? Wow, well thank god they have those talking portraits all over the school. One of them must have seen something. Yeah, no. Right. no. So the only way to unpetrify these people is to make this potion using mandrakes, but they take a while to mature. And how are they planning on unpetrifying the ghost? Oh, off screen. Oh, perfect. So everybody <laughs> can figure out who's responsible for this, you know? And people suspect Harry. How come? Oh, the whole school sees him during a silent night walk. You know when you walk with your whole school through the hallway silently together? That's not a thing. It might be. And then also Hagrid gets blamed, so he gets sent to Azkaban prison. Oh, no. Yeah, so he tells Harry and Ron to go talk to a giant spider in the forest. Seems dangerous. Kind of messed up that he sent them there. Yeah, so this giant spider's like, yeah, Hagrid's innocent. I guess that's why he sent you to clear his own name. Anyway, now my children will eat you. Oh, man, it's going to be hard to get out of that situation. Actually, it's, it's going to be, be super, super easy. easy barely barely inconvenient. Inconvenient. Oh, really? Because out of nowhere, that magic car shows up because it can think for itself, which isn't a horrifying thought, I guess. A machina ex machina, as the Italians would say. They wouldn't say that. So eventually, <laughs> you know, say that. is actually <laughs> manipulated by the diary of Voldemort. He's the bad guy. Yeah, and so she's He's the one the who opened guy. this chamber of secrets place in the school and set the monster free. And so what is this monster? It's called a basilisk, and it's this massive snake that was moving through the school's plumbing. Jeez, how big are the school's pipes? Well, these wizard kids eat a lot, sir. Food just kind of appears. That's a good point. That's a lot of food. And if you make eye contact good. with a basilisk, you die. But everybody sighed indirectly, so they were petrified. And the giant snake doesn't eat anyone afterwards? No, it just spooked them, then back to the poop tubes. Got it. It's back to, to the poop tubes. Well, one day Ginny had decided to dispose of the diary by throwing it in a toilet. That is how people get rid of books. And Harry found the book, so obviously he kept it. Can't blame him. Toilet books are tight. And so Harry DM Toilet the books are the tight. No. Because his 16-year-old self is preserved in the diary. A little chat sesh with Voldy, sure. So eventually Harry and Ron head into the Chamber of Secrets with Professor Lockhart, because Ginny's been taken down there. Oh, that seems like the worst teacher they could bring. Yeah, and he is, because he tried 
tries to erase their memories to take credit for all their bravery. Does it work? No, because he uses Ron's broken wand, so it backfires and he erases his own memory, which is perfect, because now Ron can stay back with him. Why is that a good thing? No, because Harry's the main character, and it's cooler if he goes alone. That is true. So then Harry ah. meets Voldemort, yeah. except he used to go by Tom Riddle, and he shows Harry some cool wordplay he did to come up with his name. Wow, two guys in robes doing wordplay in a basement. It's kind of crazy that this is going to make like a billion dollars. <laughs> It does get a little more exciting, sir, because <laughs> Harry has to fight a basilisk now. Oh, man, it's going to be hard to stand a chance against that thing. Actually, it's going to be super it's easy. Very inconvenient. Oh, really? Again. Dumbledore's Phoenix Fox Sooner shows up out of nowhere, and he pokes the basilisk's eyes out and gives Harry a sword and heals him when he gets hurt. So this may be called Fox in the Chamber of Secrets. Seems like he's taking care of pretty much everything. <laughs> well, Harry does a couple things. He stabs the snake, and he stabs a book. A very stabby wizard. What else does he stab? That's it for the stab. Oh. And so Dumbledore is so happy that Harry killed the snake and stabbed a book that he cancels everybody's exams. Oh, this guy doesn't give a crap about their education. Not really, no. Sick. I would also Sick. find out that Draco's father, Lucius, is the one who slipped the diary to Ginny at the beginning of the movie. Very sneaky. It is. And then Harry tricks Lucius into setting his house elf Dobby free. How does he manage that? Well, see, the only way to set a house elf free is to present it with clothing, right? Okay. So Harry hides a sock inside a book that he gives to Lucius, so when he gives it to Dobby, he technically gives them clothing. Oh, so it's literally if you accidentally hand them clothes, they're free. They would see yeah. That. And that makes for a super complicated laundry day. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, so then Lucius is so mad, he tries to murder Harry, but Dobby jumps in and saves the day. Oh, is he just gonna use a death curse on an 11-year-old on school grounds? Yes. This guy's hardcore. He is. He is. <laughs> day, so that's nice. So why was Dobby specifically warning Harry at the beginning of the movie? Seems like a bunch of people were in danger. Well, Harry's the main character. That's a good point. Wow. That's well, it. Okay. Kind of yeah, like there's no character. real explanation. I, mean, no, I know right. you're thinking the book ever. Cash. I think JK's going to kill all the cute ones. Oh, my God, no. Oh, my God, no. The sad ones in the fails. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Ryan here. The I like there was two super easily, easy, barely inconvenient type of moments. And it's true because it's like, okay, that was, that, 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 that was it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I think books better. I always say that, but I think as always, a book always does better because it's like it, but it, it, it captures uh, everything that the you know, first you want. two movies are basically word for word the book. It's only like three onwards where they start like altering certain things. They, they, they had to cut certain th like they had to start thinking about because the books start getting longer and longer. So it's like look, we have the curtains cut certain information out. So it's like yeah, the Dursleys are always assholes up until like. The final book where like him and their son are cool um but yeah they're always assholes and it's hard to not say like why dobby gave him to warn him in the first place yeah i'm assume my, my only assumption was it was this dumbledore like dumbledore kind of sneaking in the fact or the fact that dobby was just brave enough to go against his master's wishes and try to warn Harry. I think that's all it was, really. Because it's like, it was one of those things they, 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 they the, was it, they wanted you to figure out, you know, why Dobby did what he did. You know, that's what it was. And in this case, that, that's what, that sounds more reasonable than, you know, it's like, I have no idea. You know, it's like there's no explanation or anything like that. But like you said, though, it's, this, this is, a pretty big, a uh, pretty good uh, pitch meeting. You know, they brought up a lot of good points. For even it says you sit down, even the snake where it's like, God damn, how big are their goddamn pipes? You know, <laughs> yeah, poop tubes. So, so poop tubes, yeah. other than that, folks, if you're new to the channel, you can hit the like button if you want to talk to us more about stuff like this. Comment down below if you want to share us around, share it around. And if you like it's just a little bit more than anybody else, when it comes to talking about films like this one or pitch meetings in general, hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon as well. Let us know what you guys thought of this pitch meeting and of the film itself. Did you guys enjoy the film, you know, during that time, things like that? Do you think they brought up a lot of good points where it's like, okay, yeah, I didn't really think of it like that or, anything, or just any other information that you they may have missed out on. I mean, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, put down to that of our reaction overall. Do you own a toilet book? That's a good question. But most importantly, we thank you for watching. And of course, if you want to check out any of our other reactions to other, any other pitch meetings, you can check them out right here on the channel. But until next time, I'm Chris. I'm Christopher. And this has been a very Fox-filled episode of SRB. See ya. Later. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to check out any of our previous reactions, as well as one of our other SRB shows, check out one of the playlists down below. And if you want to check us out in the social universe, you can find us on Twitter and start us at Super React Bros. As well as on Facebook at Super Reaction Bros.